Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am the Inconsequential Runner and we are talking Olympics and probably nothing else but Olympics because there's so much to talk about up to this point. And don't think this is not this is just an update on results. We're going to go way past the results, how the results happened and let's talk about rapid charge and there's no better to have part of this conversation than Coach Mark. Coach Mark. Hello, welcome to today's thing. I was going to call it a podcast. It's not a podcast. Today's video. Yeah, yeah whatever it is, it's good to join you in it. Good to join you. Yeah. <laughs> you saved me. Jump in every time. And whatever it is, it's great to welcome you to it. Coach Mark, let's just jump straight into it. I know usually at the start of these videos, we go, hey, what do we want to talk about today? And there's a number of things. I can't imagine there's anything wider than the Olympics. I mean, wow, this morning, to give those that are watching some sort of idea where we're at. Um, so New Zealand, it's the 9th of August. So it's the morning of the 8th. It'll be about 3 a.m., 5 a.m. in France right mm -hmm. now on the 9th, excuse me, there. So what's just happened, probably the last big events have been the 200-meter men's and the 400 women's hurdles whoa unexpected Ooh. what happened and so everything before that we can talk about and we need to talk about the rapid charge system which i have to say i'm a massive fan of and the athletes must be too but there's some i'm going to call it misinformation or maybe it's just misanalysis that's gone on about the rapid charge i've heard things like people are purposely throwing things no, you're not. No, they're not. No, but we'll, we'll no. dig into that. That's written by someone who doesn't understand athletics and what's going on. But no one's gaming the system. The system, we'll get into this. I'm rambling on. But the system, I think, has proved to be an absolute winner to offer second chances to those that prove themselves in it. Mark, Coach Mark, let me shut up for a second. I want to talk about the 1500, but we'll talk about that in a moment when you throw it back to me. Coach Mark, what are your initial thoughts on the Olympics or where do you want to start? What do you want to talk about? Because I need to shush. Oh, gee, I mean, so much. Eh? I, oh. you, you, you mentioned this morning the 400 hurdles. I mean, we, we, were, we were chatting about that in the build-up to the Olympics, weren't we? Yeah, it was a two-person two race, not knowing how it would go because um, two people who have been out and out better than all their opposition, but they hadn't met. Hadn't met since... Um, 2021, I think. I think they 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 met in the Olympics. I think they might have met in the World Champs straight after that. Well, 2022, sorry. And then that, yeah, they haven't met for two years. Uh, I mean, it's I was, it's interesting. I, I I almost need to go back and have another look at that. But um, I've been reading. There's been a bit of criticism over Bowl and saying had she done too many races? Did she? You know, was she below form? All this. And I the more I think about it. I, I think Bowl is an exceptional once-in-a-generation athlete, but Sydney um, McLaughlin just proves she's that step above that. And Sydney McLaughlin ran off at, um, what, almost point three under the world record, and Bowl went with her. And yeah. Bowl was with her coming yeah. into the straight. She, she basically ran 300 metres at world record pace, which is, I think, well, that's over half a second quicker than she's done before. Yep. And it just showed the effects that, yeah, well, you know what it's like, don't you? If you, if you really push the envelope sometimes and you, you push it a bit too hard, the wheels fall off. And that, that's effectively what happened. So by, by aiming for gold, she ended up with bronze. But, um, yeah, if she could have run a safe race and she would have got an easy silver. And what did she ran the relay, that phenomenal relay leg she ran. I, I think looking back, she's probably quite glad she ran that because she got a fantastic gold medal that people are, will remember. It was one race. She only ran in the final and that, and then had some pretty, pretty easy heats and semis. It might have taken a bit out of it. I don't I don't think that was a factor. I don't think if she'd missed all that, she would have um, matched McLaughlin. I think McLaughlin performance of the games really. I mean, incredible. Absolutely incredible. But I totally um, agree. Yeah. I, I think something needs to be unpacked with Bowles' performance because she ran 52-something. Yeah. It was like 52, 
point three. I can't remember. I remember it's one point two. Yeah, it's about that. Yeah, slower than she she ran in her um yeah. fifty point nine five. So we're talking about yeah. like it was. I remember one point two seconds. A one point two second difference. That's significant. Something's gone wrong. You're right. They haven't met each other for ages because Bowl won her last forty races before that. Yes, Bowl yeah. is an absolute athlete. So when I hear people say, oh, you know, she exhausted herself, she did too much, she's too good for that. She yeah. knows how to taper. She knows when she's tired and when she's not. She knows how to pace herself. There's something else. And that needs to be unpacked. And no one's feeling the pain more than Femke Bowl. The Femke Bowl yeah. we know didn't show up that night. You could be, and I think the level you're dealing, um, um, delving into, Coach Mark, I think that's, where the thinking needs to be is it because um the pace was too hot at the start and she hasn't been used to that because what you've seen Fink Cabal do in those last 40 races is run away from people not have to stay with people and keep that so there's something else on uh, something going on and Noah Lyles has just just tested positive for COVID there has been rumours, and like we saw in the Tour de France, that it's been ripping through um, the, the, oh, the athletes. I didn't hear that. So mm. we don't, could it be something like that? Because it is yep. 1.2 seconds is huge. And she's such a good athlete. She knows her body. She knows how to prepare for something. She knows, you know, nutrition, ins and outs. There's something big that happened, you know, in that race. And um, yeah, it'd be really interesting to find out. It will be. It's not the showdown we expected. Um, yeah, I feel for it. Also, of course, the mental thing as well. And we'll <sighs> talk about this a little bit in the fifteen hundred. But um, you're she's striving for gold. Gold, gold is it was gold or nothing really. Yep. Um, when she real when you realise that's not going to be possible, your motivation is quite different to Sydney McLaughlin, who's who's running away to the win, go possible world record to someone who's running away from you yep. and you realise your dreams have been shattered. Yep. Um that is that as well it might might um might be a factor as well. Yeah um, look when you watch it back, I wonder if you'll see what I saw. I saw her recognize that at about the 250 to 270 mark, just coming off the the final bend, mm. there was like a realization in her face that this is gone. This is past me. Mm. And and you could see yeah. the motion, the wave starting to come over then. You saw it certainly once yeah. she crossed the finish line and she caught up with her, her yeah. parents that were there in the stand. But you could see it yep. there that there was, you know, this realisation, you know. And, and the realisation was for all of us. It was about that 250 mark. We were like, yes, this is not going to plan. There's a gap opening uh -huh. that's not going to get closed. Because you would have thought yeah. if one beat the other, it would have only been by those last couple of meters over the line. They would have been toe to toe the whole way. So as soon as you see a gap, because they're so good, you think that as soon as there's a gap, one is not good enough to close the gap on the other because the other one's too good to let that gap get closed. So yeah, yeah, what a phenomenal. I, I wonder if as well because um, she was at a very slight disadvantage. She was outside McLaughlin yes. as well, yep. so she she never saw McLaughlin until but, McLaughlin came past her. I mean, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Where, where she could might have been able to keep off her. So, I mean, these they, they all little 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 margin, but they 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 all add up. They all yeah. add up. I totally yeah. agree though. Yeah, when McLaughlin, Sydney McLaughlin was in five, and Femke Ball was in six, I thought that is mm. perfect. But Sydney McLaughlin, mm. that's where because you can keep an eye, you can keep an eye on them. Now they're running their own race, but it's always good to know where they are. Fem Cabal didn't know where Sydney was until she felt her come past. So yeah. gosh, yeah. well, I look there. I don't know. I know Fem Cabal's young. I don't Sydney mm. McLaughlin Lavoni. How old is she? Do you know? Yeah, I, I don't she's know. I, I, don't, I, I don't think she's terribly old. <laughs> no, I think I she's think 23, she's 24. Old. Because yeah. she was 19, I think, when she was like starting to. So, okay. what we're going to do is we're going to see the next five or six years with these two. So, this is yeah. round one. So, stay excited. Not finished. No, but Bowl's not going not gonna to put the spikes away. And that's it. Yeah, oh. that's going to be, um, she's going to be training for that for four years now. Yeah. 
Okay, we've got a lot to come. Yeah. All right, more events. Gosh, let's go through them. And, and there's so much I want to talk about in field, but there is this part, this this video is not about the field event. My, Coach Mark and I will only talk about the field events if we get bored, but boy, was there a lot <laughs> going on in the field. But let's go, let's go again. Okay, you started with the hurdles. If I can go next, we got to talk about the 1500 men's. Let me start with just one thing. Cole Hocker, when he put the brakes on with about 90 or 100 to go, when he chose the inside yes. line and he had to put the brakes on, I thought, oh, yes. he cooked it. He still won it. No. And Inge Britson gave him, now I don't know, I'll, I'll refer to you in just a second, Coach Mark, to your expertise, but in where I came from, in BMX, you never leave the inside line on a berm open. Never. Because if someone yes. takes it, they will cook you. So as a BMX, ex-BMX rider, new to athletics, when I saw Inga Britson come in three quarters the way and gave uh, Cole Hocker the rope, I couldn't believe that. Now, I might have that wrong. I know. Uh, in my mind, it would be you always make sure someone has to come around the outside of you. So when I saw those two things, Hocker have to put the brakes on. I thought he was gone. But to go again... And then run Josh Kerr. Woo! Okay, over to you, Coach Mark. Tell me about the lineman. Tell me about Inga Britson. I think he did the right thing. He needed to do it. I think he all should have gone harder if he could have because it would have yeah. been more of attrition. That was the only way he was going to do it. In my mind, Josh yep. Kerr, he was thinking two things. I hold on for dear life. I back my sprint my speed with 150 to go didn't quite work out that's what i took from the 1500 coach mark yeah I, I think it was it was such a good race because you had you had inga britson I, I agree with you that that was his tactic and he he knew that he i think you know you know in the heats where he was stuffing around and ran at the back yeah, yeah. and then had, had a real i think he was he was actually um trialing out his finish finishing kick see seeing what he was like as a kick and it Good I don't spot. think he would have been so happy with that. It was okay, but he but he didn't come all the way through. I, I think that was kind of like cemented in his mind. I'm, I'm faster than everyone else in this race. The only way I can really guarantee I can beat Kerr, who's, who he knew was a strong guy from early in the season when he met him, um, is to run the legs off him. And it, and it nearly worked. It really did. I mean, I, I was looking at his lap times. So he ran the first lap 54. Second lap fifty six, but he hardly slowed. Yeah. Third lap fifty five, and then he ran the the last four hundred. You know, if you so, which is part of the third lap in fifty four. Yeah. So so that you, any other any other instance, you'd say, boy, that's a perfectly paced race. But there are two things there that one one um, it shows that it's 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 a lot harder to do that by yourself. Than to do half of it behind a pacemaker, which he's done in the past. Yeah. To, and and two, um, Kerr could hang on to that. That yeah. was the other thing. Although, the, did you notice the Kenyans? The other two two people went with him with the two Kenyans. They ended yeah. up last and second to last, so they couldn't go with him. He blew them apart. No. He couldn't get rid of Kerr. Um, and Hocker and Nagus were were very smart. They hung back in about sort of fifth and sixth. So they just they were just that like second or so off the pace, um, and and Hocker I always knew he had a had the finish, if he was in contention at a hundred to go he was going to be um, yeah really don't what we didn't know is if he could run that quick but now of course we do know he could run that quick and kick off it. Well look, um, this is what I heard. So I've just been watching a couple of interviews with Carl Hocker, yeah, and one of the interviews told him you ran the last hundred in eleven seconds. You close oh. the last hundred in eleven seconds. Now, remember, for those of you watching, of course, you know this. You can't compare that hundred meters with the hundred meter race because these guys have got a head start of over twenty five kilometers an hour, where the sprinters are starting from zero. Big difference because in one second, twenty five k an hour, you're covering what eight, eight and a half meters. Boom, straight away, right? But eleven second close. I mean. Yeah, and Josh Kerr, he called it. He he did say he, he ran a he ran a perfect he race as well. Paces, yeah. yep. He called it. He, he had the right strategy. Hold on, and he, then just out sprint him. He but, had, and he he showed he he could hang on, and he had the measure of Kerr. 
And yep. unfortunately for him, Hocker just had that little bit extra. Uh, yep. And and when you're talking about, uh, so Inga Britson went wide. Yeah, it is a cardinal sin, but I can I can totally see why he did it in the in the context of it because Kerr was his big rival. He was it was sort of gladiatorial with the two of them, and Kerr was coming past them on the right. And it's it's almost an instinctive thing. I've I've done just, that myself. Okay. You, you you just naturally veer towards them. Uh, you, you're not trying to cheat, but you, um, you, you're just trying to almost do anything you can to stop yeah. them going past. Whether he was even aware of Hocker, I don't know. He might have been, but I think he was He was mainly just trying to... I think he knew the writing was on the wall with uh, with Kerr. Yeah. Um, and he was just trying to trying to hold him off. Oh, Very and, lucky for Hocker, because otherwise he would have had nowhere to go. No, totally. And I think Ingebrigtsen, I think he felt the writing was on the wall about... Looked to be about, in my mind, about two hundred and fifty meters out from the finish when he was looking yeah. and he was looking for the gap. They were. He, he, he almost glanced there. behind, didn't he? He saw, oh, they're still yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, and he didn't want them there. Yeah. He wanted the gap. And even though the Kenyans came, as you said, towards the back of the field, there was a uh, was it chair that was sitting in between Kerr and Ingebrigtsen at this earlier stages. That was enough to, I think, just push the wind around and, and fill the gap. If if they weren't there. And Ingebrigtsen got maybe five meters and could smell something. Then I think we would have had a very different race. Super interesting. I've watched oh. it a couple of times. I'll watch it again. I love it. You've got Hobbs Kessler. Now he came fifth. So you got American one, five, and three. So great training amongst them. So then again, and, and, yeah, yeah. If, if, Kerr's if, essentially an American as well. He 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 lives there. He went to, through the um. The yeah, collegiate yeah. system there. So so one one to five, only Ingebrigtsen was the only one that didn't come through that collegiate system, which yeah. which speaks volumes. Yeah. For that, doesn't it? Um talk, we're talking actually about um Ingrid, so comparisons a little bit with Bowl. Um it reminded him, you know, where he he sort of um once once Kerr and um uh and Hocker had got past him, he seemed to kind of yeah. He, he just lost that oomph, didn't he? Um, it reminded me of uh, the Moscow Olympic final, which was, again, the Co and Ovet was a similar thing, you know, matching them against each other. Co, Co went away from Ovet. Ovet was trying to be Co, obviously, on his shoulder. Co accelerated away from himself. And the journalist put it really well, because Ovet ended up third as well. He lost the silver. Um, but they said uh, once he realised he couldn't get gold said the silver medal had about as much appeal as a milk bottle top <laughs> for him and it was possibly similar you know he, he, he was a, 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 a silver or bronze uh, to him probably you know was really uh no, you know he's got loads of golds hasn't he look, I, I think you're absolutely right that would be that. in the soft you know underneath the socks from the yep uh, and look, in the draw. It, it comes across in spades that that's Ingebrigtsen's mindset. It's I'm only running for one medal, and that's gold, and everything else is is the same. And it's either yeah. gold or it's, it's it's some level of failure. And so I think you're yeah. right. And and we're not being critical of it. That's just someone's mindset. And athletes yeah. at that level, they need their own mindset that helps them drive them. And and I think you're absolutely yeah. right with that observation, Coach Mark. For Ingebrigtsen, it's gold or nothing. And as soon as someone comes past them and he knows he hasn't got anything else, then yeah, he he shuts. He's just one of those that shuts up shop, and that's fine. No dramas. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any other events you want to talk about before the reaper charge? Gosh, there's there was just so much. Oh boy. Oh, I mean, uh, the, the, the men's me and you meters, are both uh, the eight hundred meter person. runners. So, so one another one I was thinking of. Um, Kiwi Hodgkinson's uh, oh, win was yeah. an absolute masterclass, tactical masterclass. Um, initially, I thought she'd, you know, I thought she'd blown it because she she's not as quick as Mora, Mary Mora, who was her yeah. big opponent. She's got a much quicker 400 meter time, and I thought she hasn't gone quick enough in the first lap. And Mora was just sitting on her. But what what Hodgkinson did, which was was so smart, she just kept the lead and wouldn't let. Mora was trying to take the lead off her. She wouldn't let her. And that forced Mora, almost the whole second lap, Mora had to run in the second lane. So she was she was running. I mean, a second lap's about almost eight metres longer you're running. And that's about how much Hodgkinson beat her by, about yeah. eight metres. 
you don't you, in an 800 where you're flat out the whole way you really don't want to run further than you have to and Hodgkinson forced it to um and yeah yeah no it, it was it was wonderfully composed given all the all the pressure on it did, did you think that Darcy yeah look I I did and like you <laughs> when I saw more on her shoulder the whole way I was like oh you know this is going to yeah. be tight between the two but as you say when when you when you see a runner not letting someone pass them on the bend and they keep them out there, and of course, as the runner that's out there running that extra distance, especially in 800, it means so much because as you say, yeah. Coach Mark, everyone's on the limit. You don't have the mindset of, okay, I'm going to drop back half a click and come in behind and save that 800 metres and come back out. That mindset, for whatever reason, doesn't sit in... in the people don't harbor that mindset. So they stay out wide, they get burnt. If it's two two corners, then you know, that's you know, like you say, getting closer to 16 meters, and it makes a massive difference. And she just she reminded me of Ingebrigtsen in a way, in terms of she just wound mm. rolled the wine, yes. wound it up. When she felt more calm, she went a half a clip, you know, instant, yeah. instant like cruise control on your car that when it hits the hill. It's like nothing yeah. about 80, just just does whatever it, to, it takes to, you know, get the power out of the legs to just stay there and keep it there. And then all of a sudden, you know, things change with 50 to go where she was just on her own. And all she had to do was just hold because the gap was getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And it was so good, so good to see that happen because, I mean, there's probably a number of people in that field that deserve the goal, but she certainly did through her performances over the last couple of years. And how often do you see someone in the final? I mean, we just talked about someone with Finka Bowl and the final doesn't go probably the way that they deserve, um, or at least at the level of the showing that they deserve. And it did for Kelly Hodgkinson. And it was just, yeah, well-deserved, great tactics. She she um, she, um, she had a few opportunities where, you know, a lesser athlete would have, would have bottled it. So, yep. uh, you know, Either by either by blasting off too early, so say she would have said, oh, "I'm feeling good. I'm going to go with a lap to go or something," and then maybe being overcooked coming into the straight, or by feeling like the whole the whole field were like bunched up behind her, yeah. and that could really weigh on you. You know, she would be feeling more as presence, probably heard her breath, you know, felt it on her neck, yeah, <laughs> the whole way round, and knowing that she's a faster finisher than her. Given the given certain conditions, I mean, to not to not bottle it in that situation, uh, that takes a lot of um, yeah, a lot of kudos to her. Eh? I, I was very very impressed. Yeah, it's been great. And the eight hundred and the men's. Uh, we can talk about New Zealand James Preston and um, and the repercharges. charges, but yeah, look, yeah, I'm going to stop talking because there was just there's so much in the whole Olympics. Just the events, I've just loved, loved them all. I've loved them all. I've loved the repercharges. So we'll talk about repercharge in, the, in a moment. If there's any other event you want to talk about, I do want to talk about the tripping and, and the number of falls. Yeah. And, um, yeah. But I think there's a relationship between those and the repercharges. So I'm going to talk about that in, in a moment. Um, but yeah, are there any other events you want to talk about, Coach Mark? The what the other the other big one um uh the uh the ten k, uh, men's ten k just the f phenomenal um phenomenal race and the fact that um you had the Ethiopians who tried to run the legs off everyone, and then you had um Chet the guy who was the winner who was just anonymous the whole race he was just buried in the pack they hardly mentioned him they occasionally said they occasionally said oh Chet the guy's in there. But the otherwise, yeah, he never featured until until I think it was just over a lap to go. He suddenly he suddenly came around the outside, took the lead, and didn't let anyone pass him. Again, just inc incredible patience and very very smart running. Yeah. Very smart running. Um, just just held everyone off. Uh, yeah, I was so impressed. Thirteen people broke twenty seven minutes in that race. Imagine coming breaking twenty seven minutes. The, the, in fact, the the thirteenth guy was Jimmy Grissier, I think, the Frenchman, and and he broke a he set a national record. So he was he was doing a lap of honour like a um you know a gold medalist as yeah. he deserved to. 
and he came 13th. <laughs> Look, I've, I've done the, I didn't watch yeah. the race, but I saw the splits, the 10K splits. Yeah. And I've done the maths on it, Coach Mark. And what yeah. I know for me to get to the Olympics and win gold next time is this. I need to run yep. my best, my PR for my 800 meter time. I need to do yes. that first 800 meters. Then I need to run the next 200 meters, getting me to the kilometer in no more than 29 seconds. So I've got another 29 seconds to knock out the next 200 um, meters. So first 800 meters, my PR, 29 seconds for the next 200 meters. And I only need to do that 10 times in a row. Boom, I'm in. Hey, we'll, we'll write it into your program. No write worries. it into my program. Yep. And then once you've sent me the program, you can write in how you want my funeral to go. You know, we might as well start planning <laughs> yes, that straight away on the back of that. Because yeah. you, you, do you remember in a previous interview I talked about a guy who tried running behind a car, being towed behind a car? Yes. Yeah, we might bring, we will bring that out again, eh? Yeah. I, <laughs> Hey, I'll let's sit at the wheel. Let's make that a new Olympic event. So let's get that in there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the rapid charge. Um, sure. I absolutely love it. I think it's a massive credit that the right athletes are getting a second chance. We're seeing athletes, and I can't remember his name, it's gone out of my head, but in the 110 hurdles, he got off the blocks poorly. He knew it, but he got to the end, went to the rapid charge, got through via the rapid charge, yeah. didn't gain the system. He's obviously good because people still go head to head. He was good. We didn't miss out on quality. He messed up, but the rapid charge corrected it. Then conversely, you've got James Preston, uh, uh, Preston, excuse me, Preston, yeah. um, who I was absolutely rooting for, of course, like mm. everyone else in New Zealand. You saw, um, oh, and, and, and Sam Tanner, you saw yep. them. They didn't have the greatest first round, and you thought, at least they've got a rapid charge. Yep. You know, hopefully they had a bad round, they'll be better, but they weren't. Yep. But the rapid charge proved that the best yep. still rose to the top to qualify for the next. There's no gaming. It gives people no. a chance. It's Olympics. It shouldn't be brutal in my mind enough where you make one mistake, you're gone. You've at least got a second life to get yourself. Yep. And people aren't, you can't game it. You still have to win yeah. and get a charge to go through. They're exciting to watch. I'm loving it. The only thing I think would be a negative to the rapid charge is I think because of them, and I don't know yet, and no one can say this because we don't have enough data. I think some of the field heats, are, oh, field heats, sorry, some of the fields are running a little bit slower, knowing that they have got the rapid charge up their sleeve. And because of that, I think we're seeing a bit more bunching. And then we're seeing a bit more frantic um, running towards yeah. the end. And we're seeing maybe the odd trip yeah. because of that. I don't think that's a problem. I wouldn't reverse rapid charge. As I say, we haven't got enough data on that. That would be the only thing I think I might be seeing, but I love them. That's me. That's me. Coach Mark, what are you thinking? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I thought they were great. I'm very excited. I, I, any any excuse to have another race to watch is great as well. And they were such cutthroat races as well. Mm. Your rapid charge. I mean, the, the, the people who um, the people who uh, who are in for the medals generally wouldn't even be thinking about the rapid charge anyway. You wouldn't be thinking about no. going for a rapid charge if you're playing on a medal. Um, but. But the people who 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 just miss out, you know, and the, um, of the thing, it does give them another go. And and people say, yeah, but they're disadvantaged. But they should be disadvantaged because they didn't get, they, you know, they they didn't get through initially. That's that's the that's the prize for for finishing in the top automatic qualifiers. You get to go straight through. Yeah. So sure, you're disadvantaged. But but any, I don't think any athlete wouldn't take that second chance. You wouldn't go, oh no, I, I won't do it. Well, you've got the option because you, you'd give it. You, you, you'd want to get, have another crack, as, as you yeah. say. And um, yeah, I, no, I, I, I thought they were really good. And and the Olympics is about, especially in the distance events, it's not about who, it's not about who um, can time trial the quickest time. It's about who can do best in a race. Yep. And that's that's what the rapid charge is. It's not about um, 
you know, you might finish well back, but you just happen to be in the much faster um, semi-final. You might have had Jakob Ingebrigtsen in your semi-final who was deciding to, to blast it out the front and you just sort of tuck in and you were lucky that you end up getting a faster time than someone who finished in the same position in the first team. So you got oh, through, yeah. for example. And that was one of the arguments they were using, I, I read in that article, saying, you know, this person... You know, um, they would have got through to the to the um, other round if it had been faster, smoother, as they call it. But um, but that what everyone knew that wasn't the situation this time. Mm-hmm. So you can't you can't use a rule that wasn't even applying. People weren't racing in that way, and that's why you know you said the races were probably a bit slower um, because there was no benefit in um, in blasting it out and just trying to make it a fast time. Everyone is actually racing to get into that. Yep. In, into that uh you know automatic automatic spot um so i i, I think it's i think it's a good idea it's, it's actually it was brought in by the ioc for that reason to give basically to give everyone um another crack if necessary and i, I think it, i think it's a good thing it's it, it, um i think every every record charge i saw was very exciting um yeah and um only good i'm, I'm sure they'll they'll keep it for the next olympics well, they're not they're not having it for the world champs because it's um it's not a a- world athletics uh, initiative. Mm. They might not have the time and the schedule. I I, I suspect that, that that's a factor, obviously, because you have to be able to wedge these in somewhere yeah, in the schedule. Yeah, yeah. you are yeah. running essentially another event within or another heat you are. event or a number of heats. So yeah, you're right yeah. about that. I think oh, there was one four hundred. So the ripper charge. Yeah, the disadvantage thing. Yeah, gosh, no. Okay, we won't even talk to that because that's so far off. It's giving athletes a second chance and they would mm. they would take that by and large and they've got the opportunity to opt out. So there was one 400-metre ripper charge and I think there was three 400 metres, don't quote me on this, and I think it was the top one plus the next fastest time did it. Mm. And there was one 400 that had seven in it but only four turned up, three opted out. So I think what they did is they were like, and I think one was a Japanese runner that was going to be part of the relays, the four by 100 coming up or, or something like that. And they looked at their time and they were like, there's no way we're going to close. So we're not going to do a ripper charge and then go through because we're not in contention, we know. And they opted out. And that's, that's so you can choose, you know, do you still go along to the ripper charge? Do you opt yeah. out? Options there. So yeah, I, I haven't heard, I haven't heard a sensible bad word about the rep charges. And conversely, no. everything I've seen, I, I think it's just turned up to be a winner. And the key thing is, and I, is the point you made, Coach Mark, it disadvantaged those that were not the rep charge, the previous system, those that were in the earlier heats for a race that the last heat knew what they needed to run to be able to go through and bounce over those that were the fastest losers, the non-automatic qualifiers in the previous heats. It was a distinct advantage for those in the later heats where they think yeah. uh, you have runners that know they can't finish first or second to qualify, but if they go hell for lead and they time try and they pace themselves, they will, yeah. and they know what time they need to beat, they know that they'll go through as the you know, uh, non-automatic qualifiers, the next fastest loser. It was a massive advantage to those in the latter heats, in the last heat, in the last heat. So, and that yeah, the only way that system, I reckon, would be fair is if you had like a diamond lead. So each heat had a had a pacemaker going at a certain pace. Yeah. You know, so every race is paced at the same pace, sort of thing. I mean, you know, like like they do in a Kieran and um, cycling, then and they cycling. pull off yep. and then everyone go for it. Yeah, but, but yeah, I, I, I think yeah, I think ripper charge, yeah, a winner, I reckon. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, let's wrap on that, Coach Mark. Just one quick question for you: the next biggest event, because we've still got events coming up, and I'm going to release this video straight after um, we've hit record, uh, hit stop, and I'll get it up. So, what's the next biggest event between now and the end of the Olympics that you're going to keep an eye on? The one that you're most excited oh. about? The, the men's 800 metres is the one I'm uh, most excited about. Uh, yep. Can't wait. And, 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 and it's really open. I mean, who do you put your money on? You would think Sajati, but 
800 metres, it's actually hardest to make the final often than being in the final because the final is only the top two. Yeah. 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 The quality and, that's fallen by the wayside and how fast 800 metres have been, uh, runners have been, uh, both men's and women's, uh, leading up to the Olympics in the last year, it has been phenomenal. That The 800 metres has, to some extent, completely reinvented itself. You know, it's gone to next level. It's, yeah, it's, and I hope Masters watching this, let's not fall into this trap of thinking of 800 metres as an out-and-out -out sprint the whole way. No, we need to keep the 200 to 400 metre low. In fact, we need to stop the stupidity. <laughs> we need to have a gentleman's arrangement yeah. that we don't go mental in the first 200 metres. Yeah. You know, we're worried that we're going to get dropped off. Let's just jog the first lap, hold hands, and then turn it into the final 400. Anyway, conversation to have with others. They, they, they always need another starter standing with 200 to go to fire a gun when you get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. See, we'll yeah. get going again. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. So thank you so much, Coach Mark. Thank you for those that have watched this video to the end. Keep an eye on the 800 metres. The men's final still to come. You know, Keely Hodgkinson has won the women's. If you haven't seen that, watch it. It's a two-minute watch. It is brilliant. I'm looking forward to the finals of the 4 by 100 Keep an eye on the French team. They've invented... I think they've got a new baton change. Instead of overhand, it's now underhand. So when they receive it, oh. arm pump straight away, as opposed to overhand coming down up. I think yeah. they've got something new there. And there's something else I, mm -hmm. I saw that's a new technique. I can't remember it. So there was the relay and there was, I don't know, but I'll see it again. I'll mention it in the next one. Stay tuned, subscribe, hit like, catch up with Coach Mark and I as we do a review at the end of the Olympics talking about the other track events. If you want to get in contact with Coach Mark, his details are in the show notes. Do yourself a favor. Make Coach Mark your coach. He'll take good care of you, and he'll get you ready for the next Olympics, which is in Los Angeles in 2028. Start training right now. You'll be golden. Coach Mark, thank you very much. Catch you in the next one. Yep, yeah, it's a pleasure, Darcy. See you later. See ya.